<clears throat> hey guys, and how's it going? I was at a yard sale about a month ago, and I came across this antique outboard. It's really got a funky look to it. I like the dual gas tanks that are on it. So we're gonna pay 40 bucks for it. Not I have no idea what the condition is or what kind of shape it's in. But even just as a display piece, I thought it was really cool just for the look of it. Kind of looks like something from Star Trek, the first, the first Star Trek. I think it is a, a Waterloo. It's got a name on top. Water Witch. And it's like Sears and Roebuck Company sold it. Probably uh, they put their name on someone else's. It's, it was a common thing for Sears. Don't know what year it is. I'm going to guess 50s. Judging by the style of it. I don't know if it failed and it got put away or it just got put away. I know nothing about it. So I figured it'd be a good con, uh, a good candidate for us to make a video of and see uh, if we can find out why it failed or if we could even bring it back to life. So let's get you set up in a stand and let that wrenching begin. Well, I guess the first thing we should look into is if it even turns. It does. Yeah. Feels like it's got good compression too. Nice. Let's uh, get that big old fat spark plug out of there. And now I want to shoot a little bit of oil down inside and we'll get a better idea what's happening on the inside of it. Let's get that plug out. It's stuck to it. It should be like a spade that just slips over it. Damn it. <laughs> We're starting off good. Yeah. Already breaking things. Feels like the whole center of the spark plug wants to come out. That's why it wouldn't unthread. Fat guys. Those big plugs. Let's go give her a little shot of oil inside the cylinder just for moisture purposes. And what do you want to do next? We should probably get some of these covers off because you know we got to get into that carburetor and everything. So let's. Um, See what it takes to take some of the, the tins off of it. Actually, so we go try and get a cap off of it. <laughs> this is gonna be one of those projects. How good do you think that fuel is? I can grab something for that. I don't know if I just got that shot of taking that cap off or not. It uh, definitely needed some persuasion, and uh, we would get her off with the. With those, but on the inside, I would say it's terrible. It's got a bunch of crap in it, but I guess it's aluminum, so it doesn't have the issues that steel does. Plus, it's also before fuel was having ethanol. It does reek. Oof. a little bit of love. Right. What do you think the other side is? You think they they run a separate air fuel mix or what is that for? It's a totally different cap on it too. My guess would be oil. It's got a weird thumb screw on it too. What is that? I don't know neither. Hmm. Almost like it's an adjustment. It's got a split down the center of the, the screw. Flip it over on the bench so we can get a better look at what it's got for hardware. It looks like if we get, these are probably going to be air fuel mixes. One's going to be low, one's probably high. That's the bowl drain probably. We get those two out of there. 
it looks at like at one time it probably had a bunch of little screws right there that held that I'm not sure but let's see if we can get that off of there does it have a sometimes there's a screw going in from the side yeah it don't even turn that's gonna have to come off of there though maybe we just take that nut out of the center and it lifts straight up that one's got a set screw in the middle of it and those two let's take that off so you can get access to the carburetor dribble while we're waiting. I think the chances are that those screws are going to loosen up for us. Two for two. Let's go a little fatter screwdriver give us a better shot. Wonder if that's got like a taper on it. We still have this one down here. Oh, good. Actually, I think that one's throttle. It says fast and slow. Fast, slow, and start. I wonder what the button in the center is for. Choke, maybe? This one's uh you shut it off by turning this off i think we are going to need a little bit of somehow persuasion here we get under it like a nylon hammer you can see it turning the you see in there and that travels a big difference doesn't it you would think for timing, that would be a, a far way to go. Let's see if it'll... Ah, I got two screws. I heard you yelling at me. That's why that one's like coming off. It's got one on each side. What's it going to fall off like butter now? Watch. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that one's hard. Uh, we still need to get this one off though. I think, is the tin loose though? Yeah, it seems like it's kind of floating under that. It's like right here, it's attached. Let's get that little one out. It probably is a, a mount point too, maybe. feel like it's doing anything try to give her a little a little help yeah it's just spinning all right we got to do something about this yeah, there's not even room to get underneath it though you know let's try to find i don't know maybe we have a thin putty knife or something we kind of get behind it get a little bit of pressure on it and Maybe we could tap down. We put the nut back on it. We'll tap down the center if we can get a little bit of something behind it. And that's right up against it. Let's try putting the nut on. Tapping on it first. I'm gonna go metal on metal. Yeah. It's stuck. Hmm. 
I'm open to suggestions. What's your thoughts? It looks like the whole cover lifted up, didn't it? Oh, you know what it's got? It's got like a little, little standoffs behind it. I saw the space open up behind it. And it's got these little, let me pick. These little spacers. I think taking those spaces out gave us a little bit of squish room. There we go. Now we get under it. Ah, there it goes. Excellent. Oof, that, that had some corrosion on it, huh? It's spring loaded too. Alright, let's see if we can get. I can see if we can get this little cover out of here. See the carb. We're in. <laughs> Check out that funky carb setup, huh? You can look right down the throat of it. That's a weird one. So does it not have a float ball at all? And does this tank? What do you think that tank does? Because it mixes in with it. Either there was oil that you mix with it, and this is the one that comes from the gas side. Hmm. That's odd. You pressurize this one? I don't know. Let's. So we should probably. We'll take these two fuel lines off. We'll take the carb right off of there and get a better look. And then I want to get the these tins off of here too and we can get a better look at like what it has for a uh, points and condenser and that kind of thing because I'm sure that's going to need a tad bit of love. I want to rip it right out of the <laughs> right out of the tank. We already mangled the spark plug. get a kick of how much mass there is to these things and you go and look up the horsepower it's like one <laughs> that's one side worst case you could probably leave those off and get the other line off support it a little i can't get around it there it goes let's see if we can get this this side off and we'll take it with the lines Actually, that's going to be tight. Huh? What we can do, we can do that. Oh, yeah. Mm. I don't like that. I want to support that with something. Big old screwdriver for them. Well, so far, I shouldn't say it. The hardware's not fighting us too bad. Sometimes the aluminum and steel, forget it. Was that one outboard that we took apart? It was the um, I think it was like a Sears game fisher from the 70s. Yeah, that thing was. Crappy little popper valve style. Yeah, it's just a funky setup, huh? No football. Just draws fuel as it needs it. Hmm. 
I guess we're gonna get an education how this stuff works, huh? Hopefully. That's kind of weird too, that whole timing setup. So it looks like to get, actually we should probably take this out of our way and it looks like we have six nuts on there and maybe the whole top will dry our way right out. I'm gonna go spray them, see if we can get them off, get these two out of our way and see if we can separate the uh, aluminum from it. Stuff a ratchet. Oh, they're nut and bolts. The lock washer just shattered itself in half, too. That center one's gonna be fun. Here, here's the lock washer. Maybe that's not a uh, nut and bolt. It's all welded together, so you don't have a choice. These two are look like they're welded on. They are. So it's not like we can get that center out of there up there and. We're gonna find out right now. Yeah, Cause I can imagine trying to get that one back on there. <laughs> you know, it's never been apart, right? Where'd the extension go? Now that I'm looking at it, I think what you're probably supposed to do is take the magneto off. And maybe you remove the bolts there and then this is all open. So we're going to go put it back in and flip it over and, and work on it. it. Looks like somebody did a bunch of welding on the exhaust at some point though. Either it froze and blew out or blew out. And I wonder if we're missing something right here. Or is that just where water comes out of it or exhaust comes out of it? Thinking a big old fat screw. Looks like somebody's been in there. They're already. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing much of a hope. No. You don't think that center thing's a nut, right? I kind of doubt it. It looks like it's just sitting over the top of whatever these are. I think. They are going to need a little bit of the shake and break. Let's go get the shake and break. What is the shake and break, you ask? The shake and break. It's a, it takes like all the different bits that you have for your, your nut drivers and all. And it fits into your air hammer. And it allows you to rat a tat down and, and give some twist to whatever you're working on. Give it a shot, see what it does. I need something to hold it from turning. I think I'll rig something up. Where you go crazy? Let's go see if that center does anything. It'd be funny if that's what holds it. Yeah, 
we still have a, we still don't have a way to support ourselves yet. We may end up taking those screws out from the bottom after all. <laughs> Big enough? <laughs> They're like so close. We grabbed the top. I would have rather grabbed it around that base up. There we go. At least you got something to hold on to. I'm gonna grab a stool and get, a, get up on this thing. And we're in. Awesome. There is always a way, right? Just gotta figure it out. Let's get rid of this. Well, I would think that we have to spin this thing off of here. Maybe that was that holding it on. Did that put down pressure on it? Yeah, that kind of locked it down. Let's go see if that'll move now. Yeah, there it goes. I would think that would be a tapered fit with a key in it because it's more than likely the timing for the... Yeah, it's got a key in it. But we can probably get a pull around. Let's give her a couple of uh, wax with a soft mallet. Yeah, I think we're gonna need a puller. Let me go see if I can rig up. We'll get a little tiny puller on here. If I got one small enough, we can get that to go pop off of there. It should be able to tuck in there small enough. So is this what we need for bolts? Yep. Good. And go grab some washers. We'll assemble that and give her a... Hopefully it makes that noise too. Think we can put a wrench on it? Get it to pop? Before we go for the impact, want something like that. <laughs> Made the sound, didn't it? Cool. There's our little goodies. They had a bunch of brass and stuff in there. Definitely made out of better stuff you find on your riding lawnmower. You got a is that cricket. Mini Cricket from 1936 has showed up. I don't quite see it coming apart like I thought it would, but at least we can access the top of those bolts now. So I'm going to continue to take those other, I think there's four left. We'll take those off, get this whole tank assembly out of our way. It's all got to get cleaned anyway, so. I think we're on the last bolt. The hardware coming apart comes apart okay what is happening though is the the washers the lock washers are all splitting they just fall apart in two pieces you take them out and then again you think of like what a what's a lock washer but essentially one coil of heavy spring that one's okay so it's it's constantly under Compression like suspension on a car, you know, it's, it's the one thing that's still doing its job even though the car's not on the road springs That was a ramble <laughs> Let's open it up. See what we got. Nope. You idiot. You're missing one 
<laughs> the suspense was killing you, wasn't it? Right, fast forward. The handle fell off too. I guess you can get a little better look at what we got anyway. I don't, no, it also got a bowl in it. So why does it have such a large, I put the handle back on there. The rotation look like it moves this thing like a ridiculous amount of degrees. Usually you think full timing is like maybe 28 degrees. I mean, that goes from there. What do you want to call that? We'll call that two o'clock, 2.30. To 6.30, 2.30 to 6.30, from two to six, 40 degrees. Seems like it's more than that. And what happens is as you advance the throttle, you put more throttle, the higher the RPMs, the quicker the spark has to happen. So that's where the, this changes. And this is the timing of it. There's a cam in the center that opens and closes the points and it has it when it fires. And when you rotate that plate, you're rotating the points too. So it's, it's hitting that lump that comes by earlier or later, depending on what direction you're moving it. They don't look terrible. I think we should probably clean those points. And uh, maybe we can actually get finished looking at what we're doing. Get ahead of myself. So I don't know. I would say that's a either a water feed or return. It would have a water pump. Most of them do down below. And I have a feeling whatever that one's made out of, I've done this before, can be a made out of unobtainium. I'm looking for holes that draw water in. I don't see anything. This is exhaust. This is, what do you think this is? More of maybe a, another water outlet? Like it pumps up, flushes flushes through it and then just kind of dumps down with the exhaust and out that would make sense why that was broke maybe had water in it and it froze maybe it just kind of trickles out of here the spark plug entry is weird too on an angle like that so what is it so the head is There's the plug. So that it, the whole chamber is the head. And you think it's got water that flows right all the way around it? That could be a, a deal breaker. That's kind of broke anywhere, huh? I think we'll worry about that when it's time. It looks like the crank splits right here. We always open the case up there. It looks like these screws come out and we can get to the crank. You're not supposed to spin a water pump dry. And there's going to be about 900 people that make that comment. I predict. Come on, turn for me. There you go. Yeah, I see a hole right there. Usually it's like a, like a rack of five on each side. You know, a decent amount for water to come in. I'm not seeing you much. We'll clean that up. Because uh, this direct drive, when the prop is turning and so is the motor you, it's you know you fire it up and go is my uh handheld cam getting you sick let's go pop you in the stand go look and clean those points up I didn't exactly say they're filthy they do have a little of course i'm where the i'm gonna 
move her a little bit before the gap closes up. You can see the kind of the crap on the outside edges too. And this is the little, the points is the on off switch. You see that? You nod and know. So I should be able to jump onto the wire on one side. The points are closed, so it should give us a zero is what it really should give us. And then when you turn it, it should open up. There you go. Now it's open circuit. So it opens. So let's go see how well it closes again. That keeps on giving us some a kind of a number. There you go. I want the zero. Okay. When we first plugged onto it, it was uh had some resistance to it. Go around again. Meaning it's still crap. I'm gonna drop the whole thing on the floor. I'm trying to turn up my foot <laughs> so that I can see the points from the camera. Well, uh, we'll get it. Yeah, there you go. We're fine. I'm gonna go pop that mag back on there and uh, figure out what we can do for a way to spin it. He's still in it. Somewhere. I lose it. Right there. So we need to be able to spin this thing. Before I put this on here, I'm going to go over to my socket drawer. I think if I made a socket, I think I took a socket and I welded like the sides closed a little bit. If not, that's what we can do. Spin that sucker. I bring you the land of the lost. So over here is my misfits pile. I usually make something like I cut a socket for, for doing things or, like that. This is usually where they hide. Not saying I made one. And it would have been smart if I made one to put it in the drawer to make the, the shown side facing up. Because sometimes I miss the boat. If I find it, I'll show you. We don't. But we will. That's the closest socket I've got to the size of the hub. I'm gonna buzz on each side of that, give it a little bit of more beef, and then it'll be our dedicated starter adapter kit. I think I could have been a little bit more parallel. They kind of go in at the tops. <laughs> oh well. That looks pretty good. Do a little bit of whittling to get a nice snug fit. Not that I couldn't have found a nut or something to go put on there. We could have spun it by that if we found those kind of threads, but you know, the seat's up pretty good for locking down that flywheel. I'm to get my drill. Let's see if we can get some spark. All right. <laughs> All right. Is a good sign. Although I love nothing to better to do than to put some gas in the spark plug hole and spin her over and let her make smoke and fire and me giggle like a schoolgirl. Uh, I want to flip it over, take the prop off. We'll look to see if there's a pump down there. If so, that maybe we could take it off while we're uh, screwing around with the top end. If there's any kind of uh, Chance of saving it.
probably has oil in it. There's a brake right there. has to come up first. It's got a little tiny set screw. There. Let's go see what that does. Must do something, right? There for a purpose. Okay, another one going this way from the top. water pee hole the goal is to keep taking screws out until it falls apart that's my goal anyway people say why don't you look it up I have time that takes all the fun out of it the whole idea is to try to troubleshoot something you've never taken apart before and if you really get stuck yeah but try to figure it out How, what makes it tick I was hoping that lower unit was going to slide out of there. I do see a two more screws going in here. Not quite sure what they do. There's another one right here. A little tricky to get to. I'm going to go take these three out. See what happens. So I see four screws. There was one going straight down. Crack that one loose, and it seems like stuff's happening. The gap on this side opened up. Come on, you teaser. Let's see if we can do a little counter cantilever. Somebody already shoved the screwdriver in there and hammered it already once before. That has to come out. I think it's uh, the pump is probably this this assembly, but that is threaded into it, and it, I think it's it's holding the whole assembly from coming out. I guess. What do you think? No. Get a wrench on. Good, because there wasn't room to get a socket on it, and it's it's 
brass. It's soft, you know. It's, it's gonna round over fairly easy. It looks like I might have a drain hole in that. Another, it's a, another um, like bleeder hole. like a plunger somebody's been in here before a little piston pump oh, yeah. and I bet you just got a check valve and this guy goes boing 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 ain't that cool where would the valve be in there you can't see through that that might be what that hole's for. Hmm. Well, that's good. It doesn't have a little diaphragm that burns up. I'll do the gearbox. Let's go pop that off, see what that looks like. I'll leave the shaft. Oh yeah. That had oil and or grease in it at one time. Don't know what's holding that, if anything. But it is kind of fossilized. Hold on a sec, I'll set you up and give you a close up. Yeah, so here's my guess. You have to get this shaft to get disassembled. That'll allow this whole thing, I think, to pull out of the way. Cause this can't come forward until that gear is not in the front of it actually can we no can we take if we took that off will that brass block come out of there we don't really need to take that apart i think we can clean that good enough on the outside you know just bring the whole thing over and wash it and just that would just to get repacked We'll blow that out with an air gun. I think we'll be okay for screwing with the engine part of it, though. We can get back to this. I just want to see what we had in here, which is cool. I, I, I've never seen one of these before, huh? A little bla brass plunger for the water source. Looks like somebody like, made that or repaired it. Maybe it was junk at some point. Because the head of it's... Well, you know. So where's the cam that it runs on? It's got to be... So that's got to be like a wobble cam right there. And that's what this is riding up and down on. Neat. So it fills up with water. Where does it go? What does it do? It fills up this cavity. Fills up that pipe. Goes through. And it's got to be a chamber. Probably a round cylinder in the middle of it. And maybe there's a chamber here maybe a chamber on top where water circulates and then comes back down and dribbles out and hopefully whatever the the casing walls between the two of these is still good i'm gonna leave all that together unless we have a problem i don't want to dig a hole for no reason right dig a hole later <laughs> See we give her just a little liberal dosing of that. We're not gonna I'm not gonna put a load on it. We're just wetting everything. It's supposed to be water, but it's getting a little oil. We should probably let it soak behind because there's going to be a bearing back there or bushing I should say right. I think we've protected her bum and well enough 
Let's go flip her back up. Want to see? Let's go see what's going on inside there. I see a looks like a a brass connecting rod. You can see, I can see the back of the cylinder wall, kind of. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go shoot some oil in there. And we'll let that splash around too. Because that hasn't been oiled up ever. It might even be, uh, I was going to say, it might be roller bearings. I'm not sure. It seems like I put oil in there. It's spun a lot easier now though. You think that's an oil port? That's probably just for the pivot, right? That's just for the, the knuckle that the whole thing spins on. And we go. Let's go baby feed her a little, a couple little more areas. All right, I'm gonna spin that with the drill and let it, let it kind of moisten everything on the inside. I would suspect it's going to want to spit out of both of those, so I may want to stand out of harm's way. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Good, I think try to reassemble that spark plug do something about the end that is on there connect that to the said spark plug maybe we can dump a little bit of fuel down in there and play with that that timing window see if we can get her to, to kick off clean that i think it's meant to be taken apart oh, it's got a bunch of crap on it Let the air gun. He's a, a date with the air gun. You're standing on it. Clean the end of that. It's got a separate nut for locking that wire down, so I tried to get off of there instead of spun the whole thing. We need the gap's got to get opened up. I think I have it in the run slow position. That is some um, 50 to 1 mix. It's got a ton of oil in it too, so 
It's probably gonna have too much oil. It's probably gonna make it smoke. But let's go see. We spin that with a drill. Make sure we're tight. <laughs> Launch this across the room and see what she does. <laughs> Let's give it a little more speed. <laughs> like breathing life. Resuscitating Frankenstein. Little whiffs of smoke come out of it. I don't know if putting gas in the crank is actually going to even do anything. I'll throw a little bit in there. But I think without that carb setup, that's like the check valve. And it doesn't have that, so. So we get that carb set up. It's not gonna do much for us. Ready to rock and roll? Come on, baby. <laughs> I think it used all the fuel up. I think we got to keep screwing with it. With the time is see where it, where it is, where it wants to run. Uh, I may have had. I may. I maybe has to be a little bit on the slower side. Let's go fire it up. Try it again. I right, got the vice grips on. I think like this way is all the way stopped. I think that is stopped or off. Let's give it just a hair. Just to see if it has spark too. Take that off, it's gonna vibrate when it runs. See what it does right there. That should be at idle speed. <laughs> oh, come on, teaser. Why, why are you doing this to me? Why now? You want attention right now. Of all the things. <laughs> Looks, uh, I'm gonna give her a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep bumping that. It sounds like it's a little too early, like too poppy. All that oil is, uh, it helps in one aspect, but then in another, it hurts us. Good for the smoke show, though. You want to try dumping a little bit on the crank again? It looked like I just spit it all out. It's going to hurt, other than shooting fire two feet out that side. What can it hurt? Give it a little and we gotta bump it, right? We gotta go towards you. Let's go that much. Come on, baby. Trying. We could always just bolt that carburetor back on and let that little springy valve do its thing, but I kind of want to go through that thing first, make sure that you know, we're not going to suck a piece of something in that's was living on a prayer when we had a chance and we screwed it up because we just got over anxious. But I just want to see her go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go full bore. Let's go. 
give her all it's got. 10,000 RPM. It don't like that at all. That is not a winning combination. show out of it. I'm gonna go kill the lights and uh, fill it up one more time. We'll see if it, it uh, shoots fire. Well, it wasn't for lack of trying. It's like almost right there. Usually you can get it so it'll it'll pop and fire, you know, like 20 or 30 uh, pops in a row and you can call it a kind of a run. You didn't quite get there. We just got it pop, popping and coughing and farting. But at least we got it all apart and we were able to figure out that it looks like everything's fairly decent other than, you know, we didn't get into the carburetor yet. But uh, we can deal with that, get that part of it squared away. Maybe we can get it a fire. And then we can put it in some water. Let's push some water of sorts. But that, unfortunately, is going to be another video because tonight is late. I'm done. I think we got uh, pretty good on this, but uh, there's more to go. So stay tuned. Till then. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> All right, I'm not giving up that easy. I say we bolt the carburetor back on, and what it has is it allows a little check valve. So we could dump some air fuel in the crank, bolt this up, and it'll make it so when the piston goes back down, it doesn't want to try to push back out of the intake and actually maybe have a decent bit of fuel to try and charge it. So let's go put that back on, two bolts with the gasket, dribble some gas in it, yeah, see if she'll she'll pop off and and run for about 15 20 pulses All right, see what we got You knew I couldn't leave off without the hearing the thing run. Awesome. So that's what it'll do. Just need that carb to come back and uh, have that little check valve and she'll live. Sounds pretty good too. Yeah. To be continued. You ate it all. Psych. <laughs>